I'm MJ Turpin. I'm one of the gallery directors of the Kalashnikov Gallery. We're based in Johannesburg and Berlin. My name is Matthew Dean Dowdell. I'm one of the directors of the Kalashnikov Gallery, based in Johannesburg and Berlin. Um, I decided to take up curation primarily as a solution to my unhappiness as a fine artist in the Johannesburg gallery scene. Um, I pretty much shown with a lot of the galleries and I wasn't entirely happy with it. Um, and then somewhere along the line, myself and Matthew, my co-director, um, came up with a concept of a, a sort of a mobile gallery um, to start with, which was called Satellite Spaces, the Untitled Gallery. And that uh, gradually developed into what we have, or have today or know today as the Kalashnikov Gallery. There's a lot of things that we do that separate ourselves from other creative practitioners, especially curators and directors of other galleries. Um, this comes from a different understanding and a different approach to the way we work. And I suppose we're very fortunate that we're, we're entrenched in the culture that surrounds the art industry that we work in, which gives us, in a lot of ways, a better understanding and a different perspective. It also allows us to operate on a number of different levels, which some would say is an advantage. Um, as far as emotion goes, when unpacking work, it varies depending on the artist that we're dealing with. Um, for example, some artists may be quite minimalist, therefore I guess my re emotional response is minimalist. Um, when we're dealing with other artists that are far more um, thought-provoking or engaging, I guess yeah, I become more responsive emotionally to those stimuli. So it's, it, in, in other words, it differs from artist to artist. I consider myself someone who could teach, someone to do what we do. Um, it takes a long time. There's a lot, of different, a lot of different aspects involved in doing what we do. There's production elements. There's elements that are purely theoretical, which means you do need to understand both the history and the present situation. The, the series entitled um, Escape from Self that I worked on was primarily um, a reflection of where I felt I was in a specific time. Um, I was doing certain residencies in, in um, Europe and then I came home and I kind of um, was sort of thrown into the understanding that a lot of the practice in this country is based on very similar things by sim similar artists all the time. Um, so it was an attempt to escape very uh, sort of South African practice based norms like guys dealing with um, gender, uh, post colonialism, race, socio economics. Not because I felt it wasn't important to discuss, but I felt that I needed or had a moment of introspection whilst away and um, ironically enough I tried to kind of utilize the sort of notion of creating work in a black hole essentially was the, the point of departure. So um, work with no direct meaning per se that became innately aesthetic and visual but then the irony in the end was it actually made me start questioning my own place and identity all over again by trying to escape it. Um, I also dealt with issues of art and value and death. So, and that somehow ended up kind of channeling um, focus into um, irony and um, sort of work and, va and value and how a lot of artists struggle and hence become a cliche and then upon death they find success because the market now attributes a higher value to your practice and works that have you, you've created because you can no, 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 no longer make any more of them. So that's essentially one of the, the key factors in that series. What inspires me? Um, the artists that we work with are the main inspiration for what we do. When you as you said, when you unpack a piece of art or unwrap something that you've been waiting for and expecting and you see it for the first time, you know instantly if, it's, if the artist has pushed themselves, if they've gone in a new direction, that's the exciting part. You, you understand immediately how people are going to react to that artwork. You understand or you see 
the future of what that artwork is going to represent now, but also you see it in the context of people who are going to look at that piece 20, 30, 40 years from now. So I think that is the main inspiration. I can get moved by an amazing video piece, um, but I can also get moved by a really cool painting. So it's like, it's all very relative to A, my emotional state at any point in time, and B, um, if I feel um, a medium or, or an aesthetic that's been created is something that um, I couldn't create myself, essentially. Yeah, so I'm moved by individuality and originality. I see a movement of young creatives that are very politically conscious and very conscious of trying to define their place in the future of our country. And I think that movement is coming to a spearhead now and a lot of the people at the front of this pack, at the actual the breaking point of this argument, are young artists, young intellectuals, and people who are starting to ask all the right questions at the right time. So I think this is part of a creative movement that is especially vivid right now in Johannesburg, especially in Bramfontein, because we are sandwiched in between institutions of higher learning, we're sandwiched in between um, trade unions and all of that is creating a very interesting time to be active and to understand what's happening and what's changing in South Africa but yeah do I think it's a creative movement right now yeah it's the creative movement it's not the fees must fall it's not the whoever must fall I want to be more involved in a movement which is less about things falling and more about things being built my favorite female artist to date, that's a tough one, I've got so many. Um, I thought you were going to say Marlene Dumas. <laughs> I guess internationally, but once again it's medium specific, like I have a favorite female performance artist and maybe a favorite female painter, but I suppose if I had to choose one, I'm quite fond of Tracy Eamon, who was a YBA, um, she's English, and then I suppose in a South African context, let's say performance, um, I've been enjoying a lot of Lorato Shady's work, but she's based in Berlin now. Um, who else? Painter, painters? Yeah, there are just so many, it's hard to pinpoint, I guess. Um, and we also work with so many artists, I feel like it's unfair for me to, to pick. My one piece of advice would be always try and understand the layout and the landscape of the industry that you're going to try and operate in. Do your research because your knowledge is what's going to give you all the power to make the right decisions and speak to the right people. If you don't do your research then you won't understand what you're trying to do fully and you might not succeed but knowledge is power. And preparation is key. Do you want to just say preparation properly? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>